Hey everyone, welcome back to the Flesh Tools series for SideFX's Project Grot. In the previous chapter, we polished our tools visuals and are essentially done with everything geometry related, but there's still work left to do behind the scenes. In this chapter, we will add vertex colors to our flesh clusters that a shader in Unreal will interpret as masks, similar to a smart material in software such as Substance Painter. Let's get into Houdini! Alright, we're back in our scene. If you've watched the Ruins tutorial series, this part should be familiar for you. And actually nothing is different, I just want to show it again for anyone that has not watched it. Basically the core idea is just that, like with a smart material, we will um, isolate and mask out certain areas, such as for instance anything that is supposed to be the inside of the concrete, we will add green color and then the shader will add a different concrete material on the inside than on the outside. On the edges we're gonna calculate the curvature and add some color there to add a different material. Um, and for the flesh we want to add for instance the thickness and um, calculate the distance to the closest surface. So let's just get started. For our flesh the base vertex colors that we're gonna use is black um, and this will default to our normal flesh color. And for the thickness, just like with the ruins flesh, we're gonna fake it because it's much faster and also less error prone. If you wanna calculate the thickness for, I don't know, some waxy structures or whatever, or if you have big flesh things, you can use either the measure thickness or labs calculate thickness nodes to get an actual physical thickness measuring. In our case though, I'm gonna, I'm just gonna use an attribute wrangle and I'm going to use the curve view attribute we've prepared earlier. So I'm just going to say um, at cd dot r equals at curve view. I just want to make sure that it's inverted because we want the ends to be thicker than the middle parts. So I'm just going to say one minus at curve view. And that's it for the thickness. I'm going to call this red thickness. And the green channel is also really easy. We can just use this preset code snippet nearest point distance and we can plug in um, this merge node where we put the rocks and the environment. It looks very similar to the thickness but what it's actually doing is it's calculating the distance to the nearest surface. And this is pretty cool because we can use that, for instance, to animate the flesh a little bit, like, I don't know, to make it pulsate or something like that. Um, I just want to make sure that I don't write this in the red channel. I'm going to say at cd.g equals at dist. And I also want to clamp it using a fit01 function. Just say between zero and one, call it green distance to nearest. And the last thing we need is an attribute noise. And instead of using all the colors available to us, I just care about the blue channel. And let's just isolate that for a moment so we see what's going on. And to add a bit more contrast, I'm gonna choose the zero center method. So now we can see that uh, we have this half and half kind of effect. So you can imagine that for instance we can use this color to offset the hue of the flesh um, or whatever we want to do, have a different texture, that kind of stuff. I'm gonna enable that again and I'm gonna call this blue random noise. Okay, so that's it for our vertex colors for the flesh. And for the concrete it's also not that crazy. So I'm gonna go over here to our pieces Let's see. And I'm gonna start right about here after the RBD material fracture. So like with the flesh, I'm gonna start out with a black base and then I'm gonna get another color node and I'm gonna set it green for the insides. And I'm gonna choose the inside group. And to avoid having this, um, this bleed over on the edge, uh, we can specify that it should be a vertex color instead and that way we have these nice sharp edges. And inside the loop we can add back this color by getting an attribute transfer node and plugging in our uh, colored piece in the right input and our high poly edge damage piece in the left input and um, enabling the vertices toggle. And just to be safe I'm only gonna choose the color and pass it on. Okay, nice. So now all these pieces should be taken care of. 
in that regard. But after this loop, I'm just gonna make sure to promote the color back to a point attribute, original class vertex for the color and new class point. And because what I wanna do next is I wanna get the measure curvature node and beware with the curvature node, it's gonna visualize the output and because of that, it's gonna override um, our vertex color. So just make sure that after you're done setting the parameters that you disable this again. So first, I don't want any concavity. Let's see what looks right. Yeah, something like five. Something like this could work. Okay, then I'm just gonna disable the visualizer, get another attribute wrangle, and I'm gonna say at cd.r equals at convexity. All right, nice. And like with the flesh, the last thing to do is to just get an attribute noise and add some, uh, some blue color to it. So same procedure, just go zero centered and maybe do it with like half a meter and let's see what it looks like. Yeah, I think, yeah, I think that works pretty well. Okay. All right, and our work is done. <laughs> it's that easy. So that's it for the vertex colors. And in the next chapter, we are going to turn this tool into an HDA and get it into Unreal. All right, see you in the next one. Bye-bye.